In a world where some people effortlessly attract success like a magnet, while others struggle against invisible barriers. The enigma of manifesting remains an elusive puzzle for millions, but amidst the maze of desires and dreams lies a key to unlock our unique energetics in regards to manifesting. I want to talk to you about how you can feel in your body the different ways to use vision boards towards manifesting. And when we break down the idea of vision boards, we're not just talking about going through magazines and putting it on a board. We're going to talk about how you can intentionally put your ideas into something tangible towards the life that you desire. I think so many people are held back by vision boards and manifesting because they think there's only one way to do it. And I'm here to break the barrier and talk about the different tangible tools for you to create a vision. So, of course, the first aspect is the traditional get a poster board, get magazines, print out pictures of your desires. That is a beautiful way to get started if that resonates for you. That is what started me working towards one of my dreams. It started with a poster board. I went through and picked out pictures. And the ironic thing of this vision board, it was meant to be around my career as a hairdresser. And nothing on this vision board would lead anyone to believe that I was even a hairdresser. But this vision board unleashed this dream I did not know existed. And here I am four years later working towards this dream. I am making tangible steps in reaching this goal I would have never thought possible if I hadn't started with a piece of poster board and printing out pictures. I did end up upgrading this idea of a vision board, and I will insert a picture of it. I actually got a magnetic board with some magnets that I thought were aesthetically pleasing to my office. The beautiful thing about this magnetic board is that when I have actually achieved something, I can easily remove this picture and replace it with a new desire. So when it's on a magnetic board, it allows your visions to ever evolve. And that's why I don't really like to do a vision board with a standard poster board, print out pictures and glue them on is because once you create this board, it stays that way. And I personally believe that our dreams, our goals, what we want to manifest into our life is meant to be ever evolving with us as we grow, as we learn more about ourselves, as we get clear on our desires and making sure that on this vision board that we have our values, that we have our mission, because sometimes we can get caught up in the world of manifestation of wanting something that's too big for our britches. And when we can come back to our values and our mission, it will help us realign with our true desires. Something about me is I like to bring innovation to what I'm doing. And so the next thing that I ended up doing and that my vision board morphed into something else and I created a digital vision board. It's the same concept that I can remove pictures easily and add words. I can move it around. It has so much flexibility when I'm creating. I created a free template. So if that's something you want to dive into, learn more about, tell me in the comments and I would do a video with you to help build your own. But the template, it's free for you to make any adjustments that you want. But in this digital vision board, I ultimately have what I want my home life to look like, what I want my work life to look like, the experiences. And one thing that I have in this vision board is a page that I can download, that I can look on my phone when I need to remind myself what I'm trying to go after. I put down future collaborations, even brands that I can potentially work with. And I use different techniques from Dr. Joe Dispenza about creating an emotion. So it's just a place that, again, it started one way and it's evolved as I've learned about myself, as I've learned about the energetics of manifesting. And it just allows me to have a space that I can revisit and connect with my dreams and desires. I am very much a visual person. So anytime that there is a vision board attached to a concept for me, I need to be able to see it, to feel it, to believe it. And these different versions have helped me along the way. 
Another aspect that I love and one of my podcast guests have talked about, and I actually was already using it, but I didn't realize I was using it in the terms of a vision board, is creating a specific Pinterest board around your desires. It could be experiences. It could be a visual representation. It could be a link to products. It's up to you to build this Pinterest board around your desires and what you want in life. Again, Again, it's something that you can remove things and add things to. So I want to reiterate that I believe that a vision board should be evolving with you. I feel like if you're creating something that can't be built upon, it's going to limit your growth. But this is my personal opinion. And if that doesn't resonate, please don't attach to it. I am also a lover of a workbook, journal, a planner to help me again when I want to write something down and it feel tangible. That is why I created this Manifesting with the Moon workbook and undated planner. It's a place for you to build your manifestations in a way that feels energetically connected with you. I do feel energetically connected with the moon, and I like the idea of building my goals around that when it feels resonant. These tools are meant to empower you, so anytime anything feels energetically restricted, then you're not supposed to use it. So the reason I'm doing this episode is so that maybe you can think outside the box of what you think a vision board should look like. I'm a manifesting generator. So I like the idea of having multiple places where my visions live so that when I want to write, I have a place. And when I want to visually build, I also have a place. In this planner, I'm going to break down a little bit of the importance of the different aspects. There is a place where you can learn about building your different rituals, your toolkits, and your habits. So for example, a ritual or routine is a moving prayer for your energy. So it helps you embody the energy of your manifestations and what you're working towards. A toolkit are the different activities to keep you in alignment with your desired emotion or feeling. A habit is just something that you want to improve and that you have a tangible place where you can track it. And then, of course, a vision board is where you want to dream big. And all of those aspects are in this planner. So I have a different morning ritual, evening ritual, and then I have different aspects of my moon rituals when the different phases come about. So I have a different place where I can build my toolkits. What that means is if I want to feel supported, I have a business group that I'm a part of, I will engage in that. When I want to feel supported, I also will interact more on TikTok and maybe stories to get engagement for my community. And most importantly, I will sit and ask myself what I need if I'm not feeling supported. Because a lot of the times we put this external expectation from people around us or our communities around us, and it might be something that we're overlooking in ourselves. Another aspect is I want to feel luxurious and abundant. And so some things in my toolkit are having a slow morning, using my red light face mask, having a coffee date with myself, and taking an afternoon walk or hike feels luxurious to me. So having a place where your toolkits live so that you can stay in energetic alignment with your visions. Also in this workbook, there's a place for you to incorporate your visions. I'm not so much a drawer, so I actually wrote down the things I want in my vision board, but I encourage you to use your creativity in a way that feels good for you. I also have an aspect of the less more. And what that means is what are some energies I want less in my life and how can I incorporate more of the energies that I want? So it's just a way to get clear of, I don't like this, how can I change it? And then the last aspect is my favorite and it's the universe's to-do list. What are some things that you can't figure out how? or that when you try to control it, it's not working out. It's a way that I can surrender the idea to the universe and allow the resources, the people, whatever I need to accomplish this goal or manifestation, these visions that I'm having, I allow the universe to attract them to me versus chasing them away. 
And the most important factor of having a vision and creating tangible steps to do it is making an embodied goal. What that means is we aren't looking for the task to be completed. We are looking for the feeling or the emotion that you will get when that task is completed or finding that feeling and emotion in the process. So something that I have learned and that I've struggled with, and I'm thankful for my husband teaching me how to do this, is embracing the journey along the way. And I've found so much more fulfillment in my traveling, in my goals, when I'm making sure that the feelings I'm desiring are happening in the journey and not at the destination. And so allowing yourself to be able to get clear on the embodied feelings and emotions that you want for when you set goals. And then you use this concept when you are creating the different goals within the moon phases. So this is something that I do every new and full moon. And when I feel called, I also implement it in my first quarter and my last quarter with the moon phases. This has been a tremendous help in getting clear on what my goals are and if they still feel in alignment with the things that I want. And so if you are a paper and pen person, I highly recommend um, looking into this. I also have an interactive calendar that talks about the moon phases and the modalities and the elements so that you can begin to understand what the energies are of the moon, and then where you can look in your own chart to embody it and really take it to the next level. If you feel like how some people manifest isn't working for you, let's talk about manifesting energetically and how it could relate to your human design. Now, like always, take what resonates and leave what doesn't. I'm just trying to open up the concept for you to try something new to see if you gain more momentum towards your manifestations and how you should envision your future. So the first aspect is the crown, where we get the divine downloads. This is where I took this concept, this idea, four years ago, and I built a vision board around it, and it has transformed into what it is today. It now lives as a digital deck for a TV show. And if I hadn't taken action and created a place for this divine inspiration, I wouldn't be where I'm at today without it. My encouragement for you is when you have this divine inspiration, what are you doing with it? Where are you putting it? So I'm encouraging you to think outside the box in a way that is sustainable for you. So if you're someone that has their crown undefined or white in your chart, here are some suggestions for you to think about to capture this inspiration that comes to you. Allow the playfulness of exploration and adaptation to come through. This is a place for you to kind of put your toe in the water, see how you can test out this inspiration and see if it's in alignment for you. It's important to reflect in the process to make sure it feels good. This is where I encourage you to look more into your inner authority how you should make decisions, how to elevate your intuition. I have other episodes I'll put in the show notes for you because that is the most important reflection tool you have. It's in your toolbox. Are you using it? It is important for you to cultivate mindfulness and presence when you have your open crown center because if you're not allowing this space, those divine inspirations may not come to you. It's important to have boundaries set around your inspiration and around other people influencing your inspiration. When we have an energy center open, you have more influence from the energy around you. So making sure that you're leaving space to remove other people's inspiration and only keep on to the things that feel resonant to you. With having an open crown center, it might be good to find guidance, mentorship, or a community so that you can talk about your ideas. Whether you hire a coach, you join a community, making sure you have a safe space to be able to communicate these ideas that you have. And then lastly, you just want to make sure that you have a place that you can journal, write down your ideas. Is it your notes app on your phone? I know the iPhone had came out with a journaling 
app a while ago. Just find something that you can always access and use and that you don't have 10 million planners or 10 million different options to use that overwhelm you. Have a few that you know you can always put that inspiration in one place for you to revisit. Let's remember that with your open crown center that you have to embrace fluidity, uncertainty. You are not meant to have consistent access to inspiration. And when there's times that you feel blocked, this is the time to go try new things. This is the time to encourage yourself to embrace your creativity in a way that feels a little different. It's always important to come back to your intuition in this process because that is where you will be divinely led. Now, if you have a defined crown energy center, here are some tips to help you Focus these visions that you have. Take that inspiration and have a place where you can build upon it. I highly suggest using something like a task management site. I have a place where my future endeavors live. It's something where I can keep these ideas and that when I have the gut response, that's my inner authority, to move forward on something, I have a place where it already lives. This is a place where it could be a general idea and then it allows you to build the smaller tasks to be able to work towards that goal. Because very rarely is there a goal where it only takes one step to get there. There is a lot of work behind the scenes to work towards your manifestations. And so having a place where you can build these visions into tangible steps push you towards that manifestation and those visions that you have. This is where you can have your strategic planning and your organization live. It's really important for you to find a way that works for you. So other things that you can think about is having a specific app that works towards how your mind works. You can also build maybe a Google Sheet to be able to build the processes. So think about what will help you build a vision and then break it down into smaller tasks and then allow you to take the steps when it's time, when your inner authority or your intuition is telling you to take action. When you have a place that this all lives, it brings out your innovation and your problem solving because you have a place where you can build the momentum working towards this vision, a place where it lives. A vision board doesn't need to just be pictures. It can be the steps that you need to take action towards this bigger overall achieving goal that you want. It also can be communicating your vision to the people around you so that you don't feel stopped in the flow of energy. Whether it's a spouse that you need to be on board with this vision or your team, but having that communication of this vision in a way that feels resonant to you. Making sure you build in adaptability and flexibility in the process so that you don't get upset, you don't feel anger or bitter in the process because the flow of energy has stopped. As always, making sure you have a place for your self-reflection. So this would be a good time to get a journal, be able to let you process through these ideas. Also with my Manifesting with the Moon workbook, it allows you to build the procedure of how a goal works. Setting the intention, building the task, and then reflecting along the way so that you can move forward in a way that helps you grow towards your visions. Collaboration and sharing is an aspect that can be important or helpful in this process because sometimes when we take on a project or a vision by ourselves, it can leave it stagnant. So having the connection with other people that are like-minded with your vision can help create momentum. This will allow you more fulfillment in supporting yourself in these ideas of your vision and being able to take action with a defined or colored in crown center. So when we look at a human design chart, we have the crown at the top and then it bridges to the mind. This is where we have the information. This is how we analyze. This is how we break down steps to take action towards our manifestation. If you have a defined mind, this is where you need to get very clear on your goals and intentions. This is where you break down your complex information into tangible steps to be able to have momentum moving forward. With a defined mind, sometimes our mind can be stuck on a loop. So it's really important to focus on solutions versus the problem. So think about how You can create momentum moving forward versus being stuck on not knowing the how 
And sometimes it's asking for help along the way. With a defined mind, strategic planning and organization is an important part of the process. This is really going to help create that momentum because we have consistent energy to be able to do this. And we are energetically wired to be able to help other people also create strategic plans in how we operate. We need to make sure that we're communicating effectively in the process and that we are using our words wisely before moving forward and allowing ourselves to evolve in the process. Again, when we have a goal in mind, a lot of the times it takes some sort of evolution and adaptability to be able to move forward. Remember to reflect and have self-awareness in the process. Are you using your energy efficiently in this manner towards your goals? Because if we're trying to force things or move too quickly, we will hit a wall and we will give up on that goal. And I don't want that for you if you truly desire and envision this. So if you have a undefined mind, it's white. Here are some things for you to keep in mind when you're building your visions towards your manifestation your goals, and your dreams. So when your mind is undefined, it's best to embrace open-mindedness. You don't have consistent access to the idea of analytics and information coming at you, and it means that you will be influenced by other people's processes and how they relate information. So it's important for you to seek clarity through the process. Taking yourself out of the energy from other people, allowing yourself to reflect, getting your journal and being able to tap into your inner authority, how you can take your dreams and break it down into information to help you move towards your manifestations. It's also important to seek external resources, do some research, find a mentor, a coach to help you process the different steps. Look at people who have already achieved what you're going after and use them as a mentor. Consider investing in a coach to help you break down the steps to take action. When you have an open mind, it is harder for you to create the step-by-step plan to be able to move forward. So finding the community, finding what's going to support you in moving towards your goals. And it's important to practice patience and trust in the process. Because you don't have this consistent energy, it can take longer. It can feel like you are disconnected. And it's just because you don't have the consistency in this energy. This is where you want to harness your creative expression. What are things that tap into that inner child that bring out that creative endeavors out of you? Is it painting? Is it singing? Is it writing? Consider sitting with yourself and seeing what you need to do in that moment, because when you tap into that creativity, it will unblock something within you. It's also important to practice that mindfulness and presence with yourself, making sure you're supporting yourself in the process. And as always, value your intuition and your inner authority. This is where you will be in tune with what you really want and desire in your life and if you should move forward on something and allowing yourself to connect with the universe in a way that is supportive, asking for the resources to come to you instead of trying to search for them all on your own. And just embrace the learning and growth as you move towards your goals. This will help you evolve into the version you need to be in this future self towards your manifestations and your goals. The last place we're going to talk about is the throat energy center. This is where speaking and manifestation come to life. So we have the crown, inspiration, we have the mind, how to take the steps, take the vision, turn it into something tangible, and then here we have the throat that actually brings the manifestation out into the world for us. So if you have a white or undefined throat center in human design, it is important for you to embrace your authenticity while being adaptable. This means allowing your unique voice to shine through, but remaining adaptable to different situations, people, and rooms that you surround yourself in. So build the practices to avoid feeling pressured by your outside circumstances and trust in your natural ability to be able to communicate. It's important for you to clarify and have simplification on what you're trying to communicate to avoid any sort of miscommunication. 
This also is important for you to be able to break down information that is easier to digest. It is also a strength to be able to listen to others in this aspect. This allows you to learn and evolve with the lessons that you are learning from other people and their energy. Something else that can help you in this process is learning that time and patience are a must in this process. So this may look like avoiding the urge to speak up when it's not your turn to talk. You have the gift of empowering others to share their experience, so I encourage you to see the people around you and allow that to come through for them. So encourage an open dialogue, allowing the collaboration and valuing other people's inputs into the conversation. Creativity is a great way when you have an open energy center in human design to help you get movement towards your manifestations and your desires. Because when we allow this creativity to come in, it allows us to let our ego fall away, tap into the creativity, and allow any sort of divine inspiration, any analytical thinking into our manifestations to come through. Make sure you're setting boundaries because you are more open and influenced in this area and not allowing other people's energy to affect how you speak and what you're trying to manifest. And embracing imperfection. When we hold ourselves to a certain standard, it can paralyze us in taking action towards our dreams, our goals, and our manifestations. And if you don't really like to journal, a beautiful practice, especially if you have an undefined throat center, is a voice diary. It allows you to speak your desires, speak your goals, your manifestations, and see how it resonates within your body. Something that you can access whenever you want, whether you use it on the journal app, on your phone, however you want to keep encapsule this information is up to you, but having a safe place where you can speak the things you desire and allow your body to tell you if you're aligned with it at that present moment. If you have a defined or colored in throat center, it's important to have clear and authentic communication. Try to avoid any sort of dominating conversations and allowing your authenticity to attract the conversations that are meant for you. Use your voice to tell impactful stories that will help, again, attract the things that you desire, the people, the resources, because when people hear your story, they begin to relate to you and it becomes something that they want to engage with. Because we have consistent energy and being able to speak, it's also important to allow others around us to speak their truth as well and empower them. Allow them to feel seen and heard in their stories as well. When it comes to a defined throat, it is super important to set clear intentions in what you want. Get really, really clear in the things that you desire and make sure you have a place where they live. This is also something that I want to touch on is if you enjoy speaking versus writing, think about creating a voice diary so that you can talk out your desires and see how they feel in your body. As always, it's important to remain adaptable and flexible in your communication so that we can embrace feedback and construction for our evolution towards our goals. Your voice is important to inspire action from other people. You talking about your desires, what you want, your stories will inspire that action from others, creating this snowball effect and also attracting the things that you desire. It's important for you to find balance and restraint in this process because when you overcommit your energy, you will be left depleted. So making sure that you're tapping into your inner authority is a must in any type of endeavor to make sure that you're in alignment with your end goal and your visions and your dreams. By understanding and harnessing your energetics, whether they're defined or undefined, you can create a space to envision your future, your desires, your goals, and your manifestations around what feels good to you and allow yourself to check in with your inner authority in the process to make sure that these goals, these dreams are aligned with who you want to be in this lifetime. So until next time, speak your truth, manifest your dreams, and let your energy shine brightly in the unique energetics of who you are. As always, please share this with a friend. Tell me in the comments what tip is going to help you the most in creating a vision board for your ultimate success.
I appreciate you so much and thank you so much for being here. As we wrap up this episode, remember that hitting the like button, sharing this content, and leaving a comment, you're not just supporting my channel. You are actively contributing to the flow of the seven universal laws. Together, we're cultivating a vibrant flowing stream of positivity and wisdom. So keep riding that cosmic current, keep sharing the love, and until our next rendezvous, stay true to your unique flow. See you in the next adventure. We'll chat soon. If you want to learn more, check the show notes and all the links mentioned at caradempsey.com slash 109.